I've been thinking. Since we showed you how to create a Schmidt trigger, maybe it's time you learn how to play with oscillators. In this video, we will show you how to create one oscillator and how to create your very own first signals. There are tons of different oscillator designs out there. The one I will be showing you today is very simple. There is no shame in having a simple oscillator, in fact low component count is very good for demonstrating the basic principles. The oscillator we've chosen for this video is based on an inverting Schmidt trigger. In case you have forgotten, when input goes above upper threshold voltage, output goes low. It won't go high until input falls below the negative threshold voltage. Here is the circuit, same as the one we built in the previous video. It behaves exactly the same as the last time, like so. Let's now modify the circuit a little bit. Remember how we added a load resistor to the output. Today we will be adding an RC low pass filter to the output. Don't worry, that is it. We won't have to make a million small modifications like the last time. Connect inputs 1 and 2 to Schmidt triggers output and RC output respectively. And set the output 1 to generate a sine wave at 10,000 Hz. I used a 1 kilo ohm resistor and 10 nanofarad capacitor. And here is what we get. Pretty much the same as in the video about RC filters. Here comes the fun part. Remember last time when we connected potentiometer's wiper terminal to the comparator's non-inverting input and we got a Schmidt trigger. Today we will be disconnecting red pitaya from the comparator's inverting input and connecting RC filter's output in its place like so. And what did we create? Let's think about it. Voltage on the RC filter's output will slowly creep towards saturation levels, but before it gets there, it crosses the threshold voltage, which flips the polarity of saturation voltage. And this process continues indefinitely. Don't believe me? I like your spirit, so let's take a look at the oscilloscope. The oscillation frequency depends on time constant of the RC filter and on the hysteresis of the Schmidt trigger. This means we can turn the potentiometer and the frequency will change. We will discuss how to generate different waveforms with this oscillator. But before we do so, I'd like to spend a minute to talk about the equations. Since reference voltage in our circuit is zero, high threshold voltage and low threshold voltage are symmetrical around ground. As we have explored, Turning the potentiometer impacts the signal's frequency. This is due to the changing threshold voltage and thus varying time between output's transition and RC filtered voltage exceeding the threshold. Here are the equations. Beta equals R2 over R1 plus R2. That's from the potentiometer. And then second equation is used for period calculation. And naturally, frequency is 1 over period. Let's now explore a new tool Red Pitaya has to offer, a discrete Fourier transform spectrum analyzer. It will tell us what spectral components are present in the observed signal. What are spectral components? Every signal can be described as a sum of sine and cosine functions with different amplitudes and frequencies. DFT tells us amplitudes across different frequencies. With the yellow probe connected to the oscillator's output, let's set the DFT analyzer to work up to 500 kHz. The first spike we can see is our fundamental frequency, the one our oscillators oscillate at. We can see that we have many more equally spaced spikes. If you look closely, they are frequencies that are whole number multiples of our fundamental frequency. Now the main takeaway is that a sine wave lurks inside a square wave signal. All we need to do to get it is to filter out 
higher frequencies and that we will do by, you guessed it, a low pass filter. So let's add a chain of RC filters to the output. I'll be using same value components as I did for the first RC. 1 kilo ohm resistor and 10 nanofarad capacitor. In fact, I'll be using the original RC as the first low pass filter. With that done, let's take a look at the spectrum after each filter stage. That is before filtering, after first filter, after the second one, and after the last one. If you think not much is happening, remember that the vertical axis is in decibels. Every 6 decibel drop means that voltage has been halved. With the next highest peak, about 30 decibels below the first one, base signal is 32 times stronger than noise sources. So, let's also take a look at the waveforms at each stage. On the oscilloscope, we can see that the final signal is visually indistinguishable from a pure sine wave. It is heavily attenuated, yes, but this can be fixed by amplifying the signal. That is a check mark on sine wave generators. I would also like to show you a triangular wave generator. Why you ask? Because it's very simple. All you need is an RC filter connected to the output and if time constant is significantly greater than oscillator's period, we get a triangular signal. Here, have a proof with a 10 kilo ohm resistor and a 10 nanofarad capacitor at a base frequency of 30 kHz. Here is the resulting triangular waveform. Before I conclude this video, I would like to pose a question. What would happen to the output waveform, sinusoidal or triangular, that we have generated if you change the oscillation frequency? So now you know how to assemble an oscillator. With this, we conclude today's video. If you liked it, please like, share and subscribe and we will meet again in the next one.